OPC UA is the latest open standard client interface that provides a way to connect clients and servers in a very secure manner, all without relying on Microsoft DCOM like its predecessor OPC DA. Cogent Data Hub supports the latest OPC UA security policies for acting as a UA gateway for a number of different data sources. In this video, I'll step you through the basics of configuring a connection to the OPC UA server interface in Data Hub from a UA test client, including security certificates, setting up user authentication, and more. So first, we'll start in the Data Hub user interface, as you can see here on my desktop. We need to go to the OPC UA section that you can see here. Now, since the focus of this video is to get a basic connection from a UA client to Data Hub going as quickly as possible, we won't cover every setting in this section. I would encourage you to click the Help button and reference the Help file for full details on each of these sections and settings. Now, I already have my Data Hub connected and aggregating data from two other OPC data sources, Top Server and OmniServer. Later, when I connect my UA test client, this, this will allow us to access data from both of those data sources through the Data Hub. What we're interested in in this, in this walkthrough specifically is the OPC UA server of Data Hub, covered by the settings you can see here at the bottom. Data Hub install is enabled to act as an OPC UA server, as you can see here. This is enabled by default, so there's nothing to enable there. And if you're simply making a local connection from a UA client on the same machine as Data Hub, the out-of-the-box default settings will allow you to do so without any further configuration in the Data Hub. However, since one of the biggest advantages of OPC UA is making remote connections securely and efficiently, this video will cover a remote connection with secure encryption and user authentication. As you can see, Data Hub supports three different protocols for UA clients to connect. OPC.TCP is the most common protocol for UA connections. HTTP and HTTPS are available and may require port exceptions to be made in any firewalls on your network for the ports specified. Uh, in Data Hub, uh, which is beyond the scope of this video. If you, if you find that you need to use HTTP or HTTPS uh, protocols for your UA connections, talk to your corporate IT department about making firewall exceptions if you need to use those. Additionally, uh, the, the flexibility of the OPC UA server in Data Hub allows you to disable any of those protocols to further secure your Data Hub from use by those protocols. For our purposes, We'll be using the opc.tcp protocol using the default port of 51310. If for some reason it's necessary to change the port or ports, they're fully configurable by selecting the protocol and clicking the Edit Port button, as you can see here. So you can change that to any port that you need to in the event that there is a conflict with other software on your network, potentially. We're going to leave that at the default and click Cancel. Additionally, you notice that the computer name IP field, which composes part of the URL for the UA server endpoint of Data Hub, is pre-populated with the host name of the local machine. This is configurable, though, if you wish to use a different name than the DNS host name of your local computer where Data Hub is installed. Also part of the UA endpoint URL is the endpoint name, which further allows you to define a custom name for your Data Hub to make it easier to identify this UA server when connecting from a UA client. We'll keep the defaults for both of these options. And with this selected, notice there's also a button over here for copying the endpoint to the clipboard. Uh, that makes it easy to then paste the correct endpoint when we're configuring our UA connection a little later. So I'm going to go ahead and click copy endpoint to clipboard, clipboard so that we'll have that information stored on our clipboard for use later. From here, clicking the advanced button, takes us to the properties related to the supported security policies for each endpoint and what user authentication options are allowed or not. For our purposes, we're really only concerned with the general section here. By default, the only, the only security, security policy not enabled for use is BASIC-256, SHA-256. So out of the box, we could connect using BASIC-256, BASIC-128 RSA-15, or using no encryption. Since BASIC-256 SHA-256 is the most secure option, we'll connect using that, so we'll wanna, which we'll want to remember from when we're configuring our client connection later. So let's go ahead and enable that option so that it's available. For user authentication, all options are allowed by default. Just be aware that the anonymous option means that any UA client could connect without requiring a username and password. This is convenient for testing, but not recommended for long-term production runtime. 
Additionally, you specify a username, or you can potentially su supply a certificate token for authentication. We'll be using a username and password, which I'll show you how to configure in just a moment. Since we did enable a security policy, we'll click OK to accept that change, and then we'll go ahead and click Apply at the bottom of Data of UI to apply that change. So, to add a user that we can use for UA authentication, we just need to go to the Security section in Data Hub. So, we'll go to the Security section, we need to click the Permissions button. As you can see, I already have a username and password configured that I'll use, K Rutherford, with my password. Uh, to add a user, you just click in the Next Available Username field. Uh, and enter the desired username. And then you just click the password field to the right of that and enter the desired password. Then you just want to make sure you highlight your user and make sure that for group memberships uh, at a minimum basic connectivity is selected. Um, so once we've made any changes necessary there we can click apply and close. And if, if you did make any other changes at all make sure to always click the apply button as you can see here at the bottom of our data hub interface to make sure any changes were applied. For now, we've actually configured everything we need to in the Data Hub to go ahead and get started. So, for this test, we're using the UA Expert Test Client, which is available from Unified Automation. So, I'm going to go ahead and bring that up. Do note that if it's your first time launching the UA Expert, you'll be prompted to create a new security cert certificate instance. I've already done this, so this step isn't necessary for this exercise. First, I want to add a connection to Data Hub, so I'll right click on the Servers folder of the project and click Add. With Data Hub, it actually does install with and register with a Discovery Server service on the local machine so that, it, so that Data Hub is available for browsing uh, in any UA client. So as you can see, local, I have all of my options available for browsing and I could, I could connect to Data Hub simply by choosing the option that I want based on the security that I want to use. Or we can use advanced to manually specify our options. Browsing and selecting is the easiest but in the event that you ever need to when browsing isn't possible let's go ahead and manually define our settings so you can see what that looks like. So I'm going to name my configuration Data Hub UA <laughs> Then I'll enter the endpoint URL to match what we saw in Data Up. Since I copied it earlier, I can simply right click and paste to ensure accuracy. And as you can see, it did paste in my endpoint URL from Data Up that I copied earlier. Next, we need to select the security policy and mode. So if you see the security policy options available in the UA Expert, we can actually select any of the first four options in this list. We're going to select the most secure option, as I mentioned earlier, Basic 256, SHA-256, with sign-in encrypt as the, as the message security mode. And last but not least, we need to define the authentication. We could technically use the default of Anonymous, since that is still enabled in our UA server and Data Hub, but it's more secure to use authentication. So we'll go ahead and select username and password, and then I just need to enter my username and password for my user that we saw a brief moment ago in our data up security section. So I just enter my password. And since connect automatically is enabled here at the bottom, UA expert will attempt to connect as soon as we click OK. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK to apply. And then we get this certificate val get validation pop-up. Because UA Expert doesn't yet have the security certificate from Data Hub and, 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 have, and have, hasn't trusted it yet, we're prompted as to whether or not we want to trust the certificate being passed to UA Expert by the Data Hub. We do want to go ahead and trust it, and then we can proceed. So I'll click the Trust Server Certificate button, and then I'll click the Continue button. Notice up here, though, for our server connection that we're still not connected based off of the uh, disconnected pl 
plug icon that we see here next to it. That's because Data Hub still doesn't trust the UA certificate that UA Expert used when it tried to connect. So we'll need to jump back over to our Data Hub UA server settings. So I'll just go back to Data Hub, go back to OPC UA. And if you'll notice down here at the bottom, the reject the, the rejected certificates counter reads one. Now that corresponds to our attempt from the UA expert. We could certainly we could certainly take that at face value and click the accept all button to go ahead and establish that trust relationship. Or if we click the manage certificates button, we can see that the UA expert certificate is listed under the rejected certificates. All we need to do is select it from the list as I've just done here, and we'll click the accept button. And then if we go look in our UA private certificate section, you'll notice that that got moved over and is now trusted by the data hub. So now both the client and the server trust each other and we'll be able to connect. So in this section, and this is also where you could choose to manually import any UA client certificates in advance if you prefer not to have to accept rejected certificates the way we've just done. You simply you would simply export the certificate from your, your UA client, which I'll show you how to do that in the UA expert. And then here in Data Hub, you would just click the import button and you'd browse to that certificate and import it to go ahead and establish that trust relationship. Under rejected certificates, you could also import the certificates of any UA client you explicitly wanted to not trust, thereby refusing any connections from that client, just using the import button for its certificate. However, we're finished here. We can click OK to close out of the Manage Certificates section. Now here, if you so choose, you could, you could also click the Application Certificate button here in the Data Hub. And then if you were to click the Export button, if you ever needed to, you could take Data Hub Certificate, and that would allow you to import it manually into any UA client that you wanted to trust, uh, that you wanted to trust your Data Hub. However, now that we've established a trust relationship already between our UA Expert and Data Hub, we can go ahead and close out of this. And then we can jump back over to UA Expert to complete our connection. So I'm going to jump back over to UA Expert. Before we go ahead and make the connection, though, just for your reference, as I said, I want to show you how you can export the UA Expert security certificate. So we just need to go to the Settings menu, Manage Certificates, and the own certificate option is the one that you're interested in. That's UA Expert's own certificate. So you just highlight that, click the Copy Application Certificate to button, and it allows you to specify any location or file name where you want to save that. And then it'd be available for import in your UA server like the Data Hub. So we're going to go ahead and cancel out of that and close our Manage Certificate section. And let's go ahead and establish our UA connection to Data Hub. So I'm going to right click on my Data Hub UA server that I configured and just select the connect option. And you'll notice now I have a connected plug icon next to this that shows that we're successfully connected to the Data Hub. Now we can browse the Data Hub address space down a little further down and select some read items from any of the available data domains in Data Hub, including from my underlying top server and omni server, OPC servers, and then access the data from those servers through my Data Hub. So I just need to expand the folder under objects corresponding to my desired data domain in Data Hub and then find the data items that I'm interested in accessing. So I want to add a few items from both my top server and my omni server domains. So there's my top server domain. Now this is using a simulation project, so I'm just going to add some of the simulation tags that are available. We got a ramp, we got random, we got a sign and a user variable. Then if we go to my Omni server, go to my test topic, I'm going to add a boolean, a float, an integer, and a string. And with my items added, you can see successfully changing values. As you can see here, the timestamps are changing successfully, and we've got a good status for all of our items indicating we're connected to Data Hub, we're actively and securely accessing our data from our underlying data sources via OPC UA through the Data Hub. As you can see, setting up connections to Data Hub via OPC UA is straightforward and secure, and all without having to configure any DCOM settings. 
With flexible and convenient features like UA discovery and multiple transport protocols supported, Data Hub is a powerful OPC UA gateway for accessing a wide variety of data sources securely. As more and more client vendors continue to offer OPC UA for connecting to OPC servers, you can take advantage of the benefits and security of OPC UA for your data integration requirements using Cogent Data Hub. Get a free trial of Data Hub on our website and try it with your own data sources and UA clients. As always, if you have questions beyond what either this video or the help documentation answer, don't hesitate to reach out to our support team using the information provided here.